this is Honors Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. We're doing uh, the second video in 2.1, which is still operations with numbers. So now we're going to talk about some properties of real numbers. So first and foremost, I want to clarify that my notation will be slightly different than what's in your book. So here's the logic behind that. Um, sometimes your book, well, as much as I love it, as much as it does a good job covering the material, uh, leans a little bit too much towards using oversimplified notation that's not quite as mathy because it's a high school level textbook. Um, realistically, when you see math in college or if you end up picking a career that's math heavy, you're going to see a lot of notation uh, that if you're not careful you won't be familiar with. So I lean on trying to make you use the more adult notation now. Um, so, for instance, when you look on page 87 of your book, it has properties of real numbers and it says specifically right at the top of the, the little uh, blue box, for all real numbers A, B, and C. So I want to clarify that I didn't write it that way. The way I wrote it was A, B, C, and then this weird funky looking E, and then the real symbol, right? That big capital R with the double line. What that says is A, B, and C are elements of the real set. So, so the way we would say it is element of reals. So what it means to be an element of reals just means that A, B, and C are in the set called real numbers. It's the same thing as the book saying for all real numbers A, B, and C, but it's a more likely math notation. Because realistically, if you see this in a, in a book as you move forward in math, you're just going to see it as these five symbols, A, B, C, E, R, right? You're not even going to see the word four. So math tends to uh, use sort of elite notation to make it harder to understand stuff if you're not familiar. So it's my job to, as best as I can, expose you to the notation that you'll see at a higher level. So. Uh, let's walk through the five properties that are listed here, and then we'll talk about the distributive property, and then we'll move forward. So to be perfectly clear, I'm not going to make you identify properties very often. I'm not going to be like, hey, tell me which property this is. I need the word. I'm not going to make you do that very much, but it is important to know what the words mean, because if they come up in an explanation for some reason, you want to understand what they mean. So let's start with the first one that you, you probably aren't as familiar with. Uh, if you're going to ever play quiz ball for me, which hopefully some of you will, uh, this set's going to come up a lot. So closure, what it means to have closure in a set, it's not the same thing really uh, as it means to have like emotional closure. That's probably where some of us know this word. What it means for a set to be closed, right, or to have closure, those two phrases mean the same thing, means that if you do that operation, whatever operations listed, addition, subtraction, multiplication, if you do those things, then you will get the same kind of number, like whatever answer you get will also fall in the same set, okay? So what it means for the reals to be closed over addition or to have closure, again, be closed or have closure mean the same thing, means that if you pick any two real numbers and you add them together, Whatever answer you get will also be an element of reals. It will also be a real number. That's what closure means. So, uh, for instance, I'm going to give you an example of two things, uh, something that's not closed, just to make my point. Integers are not closed over division because if you divide integers, you're not guaranteed to get an integer back out, right? If you do 4 divided by 1, you get a 4, okay? So you divided integers, you got an integer back. Great. But what if you did 4 divided by 3? Well, 4 and 3 are both integers, but 4 divided by 3 is not an integer, right? It, it's, it has a decimal, uh, some, some values after that decimal. So, uh, so, what, so what it means to be closed over addition is that any two real numbers you pick, if you add them together, you'll also get a real number out. The real numbers are also closed over multiplication. If you multiply two real numbers, you get a real number out. Okay, that's all closure means. Uh, so again, a set is called closed over an operation, and that's the way we say it. Uh, closed over addition would mean that when you perform addition, you get that same kind of number out. Okay, uh, commutative is when we're prob So the rest of these you've actually, well, commutative and associative you've probably seen before. I'm not sure if you're familiar with identity and inverse. Commutative means that you can switch the order of the two operations, like you can switch the places, and you still get the same answer. So A plus B is the same as B plus A, right? Now, lots of things aren't uh, commutative. Subtraction is not commutative, right? 5 minus 2 is not the same as 2 minus 5. Subtraction is not commutative. Addition is commutative, right? So 2 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 2. They're both 7. Multiplication is also commutative. If you have trouble remembering this, remember that when you commute to work, you change locations, right? So commuting is like changing locations, right? So instead of A plus B, it becomes B plus A, commuting. Associative. So when I was a kid, my grandparents always used to say, 
you are who you associate with, right? So associative is about grouping. It's about the order that things are grouped together. So if, if you notice, I intentionally put the parentheses in different colors here because I wanted you to see that originally I just have A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C, just the three, the three letters, right, being added together. If I choose to add the first two together first and then tack on the C, that's the same as if I choose to add the last two and then add the A. In fact, it's also the same if I had chosen to somehow group the A and C together and separately add the B, right? So associative is about how you group things. The same is true with multiplication. A times B times C is the same as A times B times C. Which order I do that multiplication in does not matter. It's all multiplication. It is associative. All right, then you might be a little bit less familiar with the last two. So the identity property says that there is some identity, specifically I'm gonna call this one the additive identity because it's under addition. So there is, an, uh, there is an identity element or an additive identity, which is zero, such that if you add a plus zero, you just get a back. What makes it the identity element is it doesn't change the identity of the answer. You started with an A, you ended with an A. Adding zero didn't do anything. There's also a multiplicative identity. So multiplicative is the adjectival form the adjective version, right, adjectival form of uh, multiplication. So multiplicative identity is the thing you can multiply by that changes nothing, and that number is a one, right? So, uh, so if you do a times one, you get a out, the multiplicative identity is one. The inverse property says that for every a, there is an additive inverse, meaning a thing that you can add to a to get the identity element back. And that additive inverse is negative a. So a plus the opposite of a would give you zero. If you add a to the inverse, the additive inverse, you get the additive identity, right? Um, similarly, there is a multiplicative identity for any a that is not zero, because zero messes up the whole game. For any non-zero a, there is a multiplicative inverse, one over a, such that a times one over a gives you that multiplicative identity of one, okay? So again, I'm not gonna make you recite these to me. I'm not gonna make you list which property is which. I don't really care. As long as you can correctly do the operations with numbers, um, it's nice to know what these words are. It's nice to be able to use them or to read them and understand if need be. Uh, but again, it's not the kind of thing that uh, I'm not, you know, I'll tell you when vocab is super duper key, and I think it is important that you know the, the, how these rules work. If you can't always match the name to the rule, I think you're probably going to be all right. Um, so as long as you understand the math operations that are happening, if you can't always match the name to the to the thing that's happening, that's okay. All right, so um, at the bottom of page 87, because all of these were on page 87, you're going to see one more property that involves both uh, multiplication and addition, right? Uh, so we're going to do both multiplication and addition, right? Um, so at the bottom of page 87, you're going to see the distributive property, right? So the distributive property is if you have a times b plus c, you can distribute that a and make it a b plus a c, right? Um, and there's other versions. Uh, so, so, uh, if you, if you use that these are commutative and you put the A at the back, so if this was B plus C and the A was at the back, then you would still get B A plus uh, C A, which again, for the record, is exactly the same because we've established that these are commutative, right? So A B and B A would be the same, uh, and A C and C A would be the same. So uh, that's the distributive property, and I think most of us comfortably know how to distribute. Now, if you're working along in the book, what you're going to find is that there's a couple of examples uh, where they ask you to solve something and step by step explain why you're allowed to do what you're allowed to do. Um, I am just not gonna do that. It's just not a thing. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, so you are welcome to do some examples in the book if you so choose on page 88 where they ask you to make a step by step justification for the math that you're doing and why it works. Um, you're gonna do proofs at some point with me. You're gonna do proofs uh, later in this class when we get to Proofs by, math, proofs by mathematical induction in 9.4 of pre-calculus. Uh, and we're going to do lots of hard math. I just don't think making you do a super annoying step-by-step -step list what operation you used kind of proof is worth any of our time. So we're going to go ahead and skip down to the next thing that's on page 88, which is order of operations. So what's funny about this is that we did an intro to solving uh, equations in chapter 1, and in that intro, we did order of operations backwards, which means that there's a really good chance you already know order of operations forwards. Cool. Uh, so 
Order of operations is PEMDAS, and most of us are pretty comfortable with that. Uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally if you're trying to use uh, a phrase to memorize, right? Um, so we've talked about this briefly, but we are going to walk through anyway because uh, it's good to make sure that we're really, really good at the actual order of operations. So what's worth noting here, and I know I've mentioned this at least once before, is that there's actually four levels to this. Level one is parentheses, which I'll talk about in a sec. Level two is exponents. Level three together is multiplication and division. And level four is addition and subtraction. The reason for this is because division is really just multiplication by the reciprocal or by that, uh, that inverse number, right? And addition or subtraction is really just addition of the opposite, addition of a negative. So when we walk through these four levels, right, I actually prefer that you consider this to be G E M A, right? And the reason I prefer that, and I, I, you don't have to memorize it, but my logic is that the P in PEMDAS isn't just parentheses, it's actually all grouping symbols. So if we walk through PEMDAS, so I'm going to make this my four levels, right? One, two, three, four. Okay. So the P stands for parentheses which for the record, I always have to say parent these is in my head to spell correctly, just so we're all aware, I am basically a child. Um, it stands for parentheses, but what it really means is all grouping symbols. That's why I think it should be a G, right? So all grouping symbols. So here's what I mean by all grouping symbols. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples, all right? Uh, it could be parentheses, right? It could be brackets, right? Um, it could be uh, a long division bar. Right, so so where there's stuff on top, so so if there's lots of things on the top and there's a division bar on the bottom, it could be something like a square root that has a bunch of stuff on the inside, right? Like if there's stuff on the inside of a big square root, all of that's on the inside, right? Um, it could be stuff inside of a well, I guess if it was inside of an exponent, you would see. So like this is all grouped, right? So this is all grouped, and this stuff on the bottom is all grouped, right? And the stuff on the inside is all grouped. So even though they're not necessarily going to have parentheses, we need to know that all grouping symbols are covered by that P, right? So all grouping symbols. Okay, the next is pretty straightforward. It's exponents. I don't have a whole lot to say about that, right? That's really just like if you have a power on something, right? Uh, if So... Uh, a square root is, is for the record, uh, so, so things squared, a square root is actually uh, a power because, so, so that's actually uh, something to the one half. So a square root is actually a power, right? So exponents and roots, uh, so you're evaluating exponents and roots. So it could be like stuff to the seventh or whatever, right? Exponents. Okay. M and D is multiplication and division, okay? So, but realistically, so it's multiplication and division, but because it's one uh, one level, you need to go left to right. They're the same operation, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example of this because if you don't know to go left to right, it makes things really, really, really sad, and then you end up with like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat like meme type things where people can't do basic math, and then they argue that they're right, and it gets really, really ugly. Uh, so please, you know, work left to right. So I'm gonna give you an example that feels wrong uh, but th where correctly, if you work left to right, you're going to get a particular answer. So let's do um, 6 divided by 2 times 3. And I do want to show you that that's different. Uh, so that is not the same as 6 divided by 2 times 3. And I'm going to explain to you why it's not the same in a second, okay? So this notation, right? This notation, um, so... This one, or you might see it written as 6 divided by 2 times 3, right? It means the same thing. You don't do the division first, I know, or the multiplication first, sorry. I know it says M and then D, so there's always this, like, proponent of people on the internet that are like, but the M comes first. Nah, bro, it's the same level, right? They're all multiplication. So you have to work left to right. So when you do this mathematically, right, and, and this exact example, I believe, because the stupid 1 or 9 thing has shown up on the interwebs a gajillion times, because this is all division and multiplication, we have to work left to right. So it's 6 divided by 2, which is 3 times 3, the answer is 9, okay? It is not this. 
because this notation, right, so this actually means, right, this actually has a grouping symbol. That's why this is a different answer, right? This is saying by this long division bar, this notation, right, using this notation, what I'm saying is, even though it's not listed here, I'm actually saying, oh, this is a six over a thing that's grouped together. Hence, six over six, oh, that's a one. They are not the same problem. So the issue that we run into most of the time is that people don't understand how the notation works. So please, multiplication and division are at the same level, you work left to right. If you see this long kind of division bar, that's actually a grouping symbol, which is why, so this isn't, this is, this is P for grouping symbol, right? Parentheses, and, and then I would do the division, right? So, so here, I had a grouping symbol first. That's the only reason I do the two times three first. That long division bar is a grouping symbol. Okay, uh, same thing with addition and subtraction, right? Addition and subtraction, right? Addition and subtraction are actually the same operation because subtraction is just adding the opposite of a number. So again, you're gonna work left to right. So as an example of what I mean by that, right? Um, let's say I do five minus seven plus three, right? So correctly doing this, right? There are two ways to correctly do this. It would be correct to work left to right. That's what I suggest, okay, left to right, which would mean five minus seven is a negative two plus three. My answer ends up being a one, great. The other way to do it correctly is you can logic this by putting negative with negative and positives with positives. So I say that because I know that I'm not a big fan of all this common core math stuff. Uh, it's not really my jam. But what I am a big fan of is our brains being able to logic through things. So when I look at this, my brain says that what I've got is a positive 5 and a positive 3 and a negative 7. So my brain's like, yo, that means that there are positive eight, because that's how many positive numbers there are, like positive three and positive five, and a minus seven. Oh, hey, eight minus seven is totally going to net me a one, okay? Um, what would be very incorrect is to think, oh, I better do the addition first, so it's five minus ten, which is not what this is. The reason it's not five minus ten is the three is not negative. Right? It's not a negative 7 and a negative 3, which would be a negative 10. If you add this 7 and the 3, then you've given this 3 a negative it doesn't have. Okay, so that's the difference. So I just want to walk through it. Um, and you'll see that this explanation is written on uh, the bottom of the textbook on page 88 as well. Uh, slightly different than the way that I, uh, that I wrote it, I'm sure, because, you know, uh, it is what it is. But um, one of the keys to remember here is that anytime we learn something, I'm going to use PEMDAS as the example, um, Memorizing something without comprehension makes you worse than when you didn't know it in the first place, right? So the number of people, and again, like not getting into too many trolls on the interwebs, but the number of people that say, yeah, but it's PEMDAS, that's the order. Like, you have to know the meaning of it. If you just memorize that it says PEMDAS and you don't understand the logic behind it, then it's less valuable. Uh, and, and I kind of wish people could just like erase that part of their brain and relearn it right. Um, so please try to make sure that you don't just memorize the phrase. Like the phrase is great. Being able to say PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or whatever you're gonna use is super helpful as a way to pull up the order, but you still have to have the underlying comprehension, right? And so that's pretty important. Uh, so what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna go ahead and do an E2 and a P2 where I have you simplify some numbers, uh, sort of simple, uh, similar to this. Uh, and I'll probably steal the ones from the book. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do an E2 and a P2. All right, so for my E2, I'm actually going to steal the book's example four. So my E2 is actually going to be the book's example four on page 89, probably. Yeah. Okay, and my uh, P2 is going to be the try this that comes right after that. Okay, um, so uh, let's see. We're going to have a 2 squared times a 12 plus 8 over a 5, right? Uh, and for this one, we're going to have an 18 minus a 2 times 5 all over a 15 plus a 3 times a negative 3. Okay, so let's walk through E2 together, right? So the first thing I'm going to look for is, are there any grouping symbols? And there are. There's a parenthesis. 
Uh, there's actually two grouping symbols here, right? Uh, this is a parenthesis, but keep in mind that this is a group, meaning that this whole thing is grouped together. And the five is by itself, right? So that the five really can't be grouped then because it's just five. So I need to do two things, right? I need to make sure that first and foremost, I do the parentheses, right? Uh, but I need to make sure I understand that the five has to be last because this is still all grouped by that long division bar, right? So within this, the inside this group, I see that I have a power and also multiplication. Well, I should deal with the exponent first, right? Because that's the E, right? So I have a four times 20, right? And again, uh, this thing is still all grouped on top of that long division bar. So I'm gonna get 80 over five, which is gonna give me a 16. Now, now there's always somebody who says, hey, couldn't I have done other stuff first? Like based on my other knowledge of math, are there other ways to do this? You know, there totally are. This section is talking about using PEMDAS, but as we move forward, we're gonna learn other options. One of many other options would have been to recognize that you could cancel this five with the 20 and get a four on top. So you'd get four times four, which is a 16. There are other ways to get here. The better you get at math, the more options you have. There are very few problems where there's not a second way to do it. Uh, okay, let's uh, pause me if you wanna do P2 without me. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. All right, so first thing to notice here is that you actually do have grouping symbols. The whole top is grouped and the whole bottom is grouped. So you're gonna simplify the top separately and the bottom separately, and then when you're all done with those, you're gonna be able to divide them. So on the top, I recognize that I have an 18 minus a multiplication. So I'm gonna have to do the multiplication first. So the top is gonna become 18 minus 10, right? The bottom, same thing, I have a 15, and this is gonna become a minus nine. When I now combine the top, I get an eight, right? 18 minus 10. And on the bottom, I get a six. So I'm gonna end up with a four over three or a 1.3 repeating if you so choose, right? But that's, that's the gist. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much our deal for, uh, for 2.1. So it's, uh, yeah, that's a fairly straightforward section. We're gonna go ahead and jump into 2.2 in the next video. So hopefully you feel all right with your order of operation stuff.